Hi everyone, JJ here with ASUS again, and I'm excited to bring you guys a build guide. And this time around, we're gonna be tackling an X99 build, taking advantage of Intel's latest generation Broadwell E processor, as well as Nvidia's latest generation Pascal series of graphics cards. So let's go ahead and kick this build overview off and find out what we're gonna be putting together. So before we get into the components, I wanna quickly touch on why we decided to go with an X99 system. X99 is Intel's highest end platform and of course supports Broadwell E, which gives us the advantage of more cores, more threads, more cache, and more PCI Express lanes, as well as quad channel memory support, which gives us the ability to have much higher memory densities, whether you're talking about 32, 64, 128 gigabytes. And ultimately, of course, uh, with more threads, it's really tailored towards the most demanding types of workloads, uh, which really are in line with things like uh, HD, UHD editing, uh, advanced color correction, um, after effects and uh, 3D rendering, uh, 3D content creation, as well as of course advanced photography manipulation, whether you're talking about HDR, panorama, a stitching, 360, VR, uh, and raw-based processing. You also, of course, have benefits for users that are doing heavy and demanding uh, simultaneous workloads, whether that's gonna be an advanced productivity or actually even gamers and streamers where you're doing simultaneous gaming but streaming out and transcoding to Twitch or to YouTube. Uh, in this regard, having, of course, a extremely capable multi-threaded chip uh, like what you have with Broadwell E is, can be really advantageous. And this is ultimately our goal with this type of system. All the benefits that this platform affords is why we're at targeting these type of workloads uh, with this type of system. So hopefully that gives you some context. So from that, let's go ahead and uh, see what we're working with in terms of the core components for our build. So the first component we're gonna talk about is gonna be the chassis. We went with Corsair's C70. It's a proven chassis and it works extremely well for enthusiast-oriented builds. First and foremost, it's got a lot of space internally. There's not gonna be any obstruction issues with our large graphics card, the motherboard, the storage, or of course, even our large 240 millimeter closed loop water cooling solution. In fact, it's really nice to see that you don't have any proximity or clearance issues between the top end of the board and the installed cooler. This makes cable routing much easier. And speaking of cable routing, you've got multiple grommeted routing points throughout the chassis and a lot of space on the side back panel to really be able to pack everything in really easily. Now beyond that, when we take a look at over airflow overall, you've got venting built into the chassis, which is great for intake and exhaust airflow. You can mount up to seven fans, including two for the side panel, which is great to be able to precisely cool all your core components. Beyond that, you've also got six hard drive trays, which are toolless. This is great because it gives you a lot of storage expansion. You can also remove one of those hard drive trays so that if you want to be able to provide more airflow to your core components like your GPU, you're good to go. Now, I also really like the fact that you've got three five and a quarter bays. This is great to be able to install things like a uh, hot swap hard drive tray, or if you want to be able to put in a multi-format card reader. And beyond that, you of course have the standard things that you would expect like front USB 3.0 connectivity, fan filters, uh, rounded internal edges so that you don't nick yourself, as well as actually a really nice clamping design for the side panels, which really makes it really easy to take off and on. Overall, this is a really great foundation for our build. So in regards to the motherboard, we went with the Sabertooth series. This series of motherboards is really purpose-built for users that are looking first and foremost for stability, reliability, and long-term builds. Um, now, in terms of how these boards are designed, there's a lot that goes into it, and there's a lot that goes into their validation process, which is actually above and beyond traditional ASU series motherboards. Now, beyond that validation process, there's also an improvement to the core components. We've got tough capacitors, we've got tough MOSFETs and drivers, and tough power phases. This all helps to give you a great experience of whether you're talking about stock or overclock configurations. In addition to this, you've got active fan cooling for the VRM, which is fantastic. This helps especially under heavy sustained loads. You've got digital power delivery and controls that allow you to really tweak into the board towards maximum efficiency or maximum stability if you're overclocking it. Now, in terms of, our, of course, all the Quark specifications you could ask for, they're all present here. You've got serial ATA, you've got M.2, you've got U.2 support via the HyperKit, uh, you have full support for NVMe. Uh, beyond that, of course, all the key I.O. that you're asking for is also present with support support for, of course, an Intel Gigabit NIC. You've got USB 3.0 and 3.1, both Type-A and Type-C are present there, and you even have optional support for Thunderbolt 3 via an add-in card. Now, beyond that, you've also got some other improvements to things like the integrated audio experience. And I'm also a huge fan of the overall thermal radar design implementation, which gives you multiple sensors on board. Uh, this gives you full temperature readout for your system. On top of that, you have this tied in directly into the fan expert fan controls, which give you full independent control of every fan header in the UEFI as well as in the operating system so you can precisely set up everything you're looking for in terms of cooling. 
Now picking a great motherboard like the Tough uh, means that we want to of course have a great CPU. And here Intel offers four different CPUs uh, for Broadwell E, but we've gone ahead and selected the baseline 6800K. Uh, this CPU is already going to offer us quite a bit more uh, multi-threading performance than the best Skylake series CPU as it's giving us 12 threads versus 8 threads and we get more cache and more PCI Express lanes and it's fully overclockable. The great thing here is of course if you need more performance down the road and it's not just about overclocking then you can upgrade all the way to the highest end 6950X which is going to offer you 20 threads and even more cache. So all the way around this is a perfect choice to really be able to enable a great multi-threading experience on our system. Now when it comes to X99 you of course have support for DDR4 and for quad channel memory. First and foremost we wanted to make sure that we didn't run into a page file utilization because we wanted to maintain the best performance possible and having a wide degree of varied workloads and heavy multitasking we want to really jump up from the enthusiast norm of about 16 gigabytes to 32 gigabytes of memory. So we went with Corsair's Vengeance LPX 32 gigabyte kit by four DIMMs running at DDR4 2400. This is a great balance in terms of the price to performance as well as the speed. Uh, the bump up also from a baseline of 2133 is going to give us a little bit more performance and bandwidth oriented applications which tend to actually be the type of workloads that we're going to be running on this type of system. Overall this is a great choice to be able to go with our build and give us room to be able to breathe in the long term as well. Now when it comes to the CPU cooling solution, this is extremely important because of course we've got a 6800K which means we've got an unlocked processor. Looking to be able to maximize the performance that we have in lighter workloads as well as really being able to bump up performance even further across multi-threaded workloads, we're going to want to overclock. And in this regard the cooler really comes into play. So we went with Corsair's uh, H100i V2. It's a 240 millimeter closed loop water cooling solution. It fits without any issues within our chassis. It looks good and is going to help to really offer a cooling quiet experience, especially when we're talking about stock and idle workloads, but definitely still offer a great experience under heavy workloads and even under overclock configurations. Add to that, you've got the static optimized pressure fans that work great with the radiator, and this is a great choice for being able to keep our CPU cool and quiet. So for our graphics card, we went ahead and selected the Strix GTX 1080. Uh, the Pascal series of GPUs offers outstanding performance per watt. It's extremely efficient and it has all the key specifications we could ask for. Now with the Strix series of the cards, you're going to get cooler, quieter, and faster performance than any of the Founders Edition cards. Um, they're going to feature a fully non-referenced PCB and VRM uh, that's produced using the ASUS Auto Extreme production process. This means that it's all done through robotics. There's no human hands. It's using surface mount technology. This helps to improve the the overall precision and accuracy in the production of the PCB board and the placement of all the components on the boat. Uh, in addition to that, the actual components themselves are improved as there uh, are SAP power componentry giving you better tolerances uh, and overall higher performance and lower operating temperatures. Uh, the thermal solution in there is extremely high performance. It has uh, very, very low operating temperatures, near silent operation even when under heavy load or overclocked loads. And it's also going to uh, be able to have some really nice functionality when you talk about minimal or idle workloads as the fans would even spin. And this aligns, of course, with being able to keep everything extremely quiet uh, along with the rest of the components that we've selected and the fan control setup that the motherboard offers. This is really important in terms of helping to ensure that the experience is essentially uh, matched to the other components and however we want to have our system running. So when we're doing minimal workloads, everything can run quietly. And when we're doing he heavy demanding workloads, we're getting the adequate cooling, but while still also having the system run quietly. Now you're also going to get premium touches such as ASUS Fan Connect technology, which allow you to have fans connected directly to the graphics card for more targeted and response intake airflow for your graphics card, or to also be able to supplement the overall fan connections which are on the motherboard. This gives you the most uh, flexibility and functionality when it comes to high performance system and how you want to be able to define your fans and uh, the number of fans that you can have within a system. Now, if you're looking to be able to save a little bit of money, you can consider the Turbo Series. They're still built using the ASUS Auto Extreme process, uh, but the overall thermals, acoustic, and speeds are essentially going to be the same as what you're going to go with the Founders Edition card, but at a much lower price point. Both are going to be great choices, and ultimately, whether you go with the 1060, 1070 or 1080, that's going to be depending on the different types of usage model that you want to target. Uh, for users that are predominantly focusing on more content creation and editing, go with the 1060, 1070, and 1080 are best realized for more gaming-centric scenarios. And for streamers, keep in mind that, of course, all the GPUs are going to be able to offer hardware-based encoding and decoding. So if you want to be able to stream out to Twitch and YouTube, you can do it up to 4K 60 frames a second with little or no impact to gaming. And you can also locally record content uh, while simultaneously gaming with little to no impact up to 4K and 60 frames a second. And all of them support HDMI 2.0, VR, multiple displays, and G-Sync, and a whole lot more.
So moving into storage, there's a lot of different options. For our build, we ultimately settled on SSD because it provides the best experience and the most responsiveness uh, regardless of whether you're talking about launching of applications, installing programs, installing patches and updates, uh, drivers and things along those lines. Now specifically, we picked the Intel 750 series of SSDs because it offers outstanding performance in terms of its read, write and random access performance and also gives great write consistency. This is important because as you fill an SSD, generally the performance degrades over time unless you you over provision the drive which affects its total capacity the intel 750 architecture and design really uh, doesn't have any of these type of issues in addition this is extremely mature stable and reliable uh, beyond of course giving us great performance it also has nvme which is great because that lowers the latency further improving the performance uh, in addition to this, we also wanted to supplement this uh, with a 240 gigabyte drive specifically for a scratch disk and also as a virtual sandbox environment so that we can install things like applications, updates, drivers, things that might cause um, overall instability or, or problems with our primary operating system environment. Now that primary drive is a 1.2 terabyte, so that gives us tons of space for our, all our core applications and games and even uh, workflow projects so that we don't really have to worry about that. But we supplement that also with a two terabyte drive to give us some additional storage flexibility, but also to be able to have a real-time backup for our primary drive in the event that that drive were to fail. Now, as we near uh, some of the last components in our system, we still have a couple of very important ones, and that would first and foremost include audio. Now, the Sabertooth board does include an upgraded audio design, which features audio isolation. It also features an operational amplifier, so it's gonna help to punch up the volume a little bit, give you better sound stage, so you still get improvement regardless of whether you're talking about music, movies, games, videos, things along those lines. But with this really being a high performance system and I think that uh, definitely for editing based purposes and for serious gamers and for users that really just enjoy music movies videos games things along those lines it's worth the minimal investment to drop in a much better quality sound card so we went ahead and selected the Zonar DX this is an extremely proven sound card and offers a significant upgrade in the sound experience especially if you've made the investment in nice quality headphones or speakers you're definitely not going to regret dropping one of these into the system so last but not least, we have our power supply. We went with Corsair's AX series. This is their platinum rated series, meaning that we get outstanding efficiency, whether we're talking about light or moderate workloads, as well as full heavy workloads. In addition to that, you get improvement to the internal component quality and the overall topology, which is gonna to help to ensure really outstanding performance across all the key metrics that you have for our power supply. I also am a big fan of the carefully calibrated fan profile because uh, when the system is essentially in those Id idle or moderate workloads, the fan's not even gonna spin, which is great because that aligns with all the quiet uh, core components that you've got in the system and the fan profiles that we can have with our Tough Series board. You also have, of course, an extremely quiet operating fan even under full demanding workloads. You've got a fully modular based design, which is great for cable routing. It makes that a breeze. And the I Series gives you a lot of management and monitoring options is really awesome. All the way around, this is a great choice choice to be able to ensure that we get a stable and reliable power delivery experience for our system, whether we're running at stock or overclock configurations. So wrapping things up, here you can see our build. I think it absolutely looks awesome. Uh, the ultimate goal, of course, here was to be able to build a system that was extremely fast, uh, extremely responsive, and was able to pretty much handle everything we threw at it, uh, whether that was going to be gaming, whether that was going to be advanced editing, whether it was going to be content creation, advanced productivity, and be able to do that in an extremely fast, productive fashion, uh, cool and quiet in terms of its overall operation, while also allowing us a lot of flexibility in terms of really being able to define a lot of parameters, whether that was things like the overall acoustics, uh, uh, being able to have targeted temperature monitoring, and temperature control in regards to being able to have the fans respond to specific temperature zones. This is ultimately all afforded through the great combination of the ASUS Fan Connect technology that we have here on the system, as well as, of course, the thermal radar design. Um, and I really loved building this system because I think it looks great, but also the flexibility and functionality that we had with, of course, all the onboard fan headers. Now, you see in our system here, we didn't note this in our build, but we did go ahead and upgrade a lot of the overall fan uh, setup that you would have inherently when you go about setting up the system. You got two fans here in the front, one head fan here for the storage bay. We had two fans for the side panel and then rear exhaust. And the two ones on the side panel were actually utilizing the two onboard fan headers that are here on the ASUS GTX 1080 Strix with the ASUS Fan Connect. So all the way around, things came together really smoothly and effectively to be able to provide us a great system. So hopefully you guys found this build overview useful and interesting and gives you guys a great foundation to be able to build your guys' next X99 based system. As always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or feedback, feel free to go ahead and drop them into the comment section and we'll do our best to go ahead and get back to you guys when we can. In addition to that, make sure to check out the links in the description. It'll allow you to find out all the different places you can get a hold of us and find out about all the great places you can check out ASUS related content. 
As always, don't forget to subscribe, take care, take it easy, enjoy the rest of your day, and best of luck with your builds.